Hello, and welcome to episode seven of the Spicy Homemaker podcast. My name's Melissa, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Spicy Homemaker. This is a podcast about knitting and creative living. Today is Saturday, November 21st, 2015. And if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for coming and checking out my podcast and spending some time with me. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you, thank you for coming back and uh, checking this out some more, seeing what this is all about and spending some time with me and getting to know me a little bit better. I just want to say today is, um, I don't know where you are, I live close to St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, it's cold and windy, and it feels like winter is coming in. We busted out the coats today. We've been wearing our jackets for probably a little bit longer than we should, but it is officially cold now. The wind is no joke. We are in the 30s, and it is chilly but it's a great day to stay in and uh, stay cozy and hang out with uh, the kids and knit, play some games, have some fun. But uh, today we are going to talk about some finished, uh, one finished object, some works in progress, a giveaway, some knit alongs, and uh, some things that are going on in the knitting community that I think you may wanna know about if you don't know already. And Maybe just a little bit of chatter at the end. But before we jump right into there, I would like to give a couple of shout outs to some podcasters. My first um, shout out is to Amber of the Yarn Junkie. Hi, Amber. <laughs> um, I heard, uh, I just watched a podcast of hers a few days ago and she had mentioned my podcast and said some really nice things. and. Uh, she and I have been talking uh, through Ravelry and Instagram, and uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know her. And also, a couple things about Amber. One, uh, she just knit, no, 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 she crocheted a fantastic little mermaid for her daughter, Prudence. It looks so great. Uh, it's got me thinking about some mermaid gifts for my niece and uh, my daughter. Don't know that I will actually get to it before Christmas, but we'll see. She kind of inspired that. And um, also, she is super nice. Um, she did something that I thought, and a lot of po podcasters I've noticed just recently, and I'm sure this happens quite a bit, but it seems like there's like a wave of it going around right now, where there's just a lot of transparency going on. Um, she had mentioned in one of her podcasts that uh, someone had <laughs> made a, uh, a suggestion, we'll say, about her video quality. And her video, video quality, you can see everything she's doing. It, it's fine. It's not, um, it's not Tiny Papers Fox's quality, but most of us aren't. <laughs> but um, she kind of just uh, laid it out there and said, uh, in a, such, I mean, in a really nice, respectful way that to podcast for her and she has small children at home she knows she only has so much time and that at this point in her life that she really just doesn't have the time to spend hours editing and uploading and it really does take hours to edit and upload podcasts i did not fully appreciate uh, what went into a podcast until i started podcasting hours to upload and download things hours it's crazy you uh it just and, and there, there's no shortcut there's really no shortcut and some of the way uh ways that other podcasters are able to do this a little bit more quickly is by using their um laptops or their phones th some other mediums that um makes it easy to upload directly but then you, you kind of sacrifice a, a little bit of quality it's it's not like you're watching a fuzzy video though that's that, that's not what's going on here but she loves podcasting. She loves the community, like we all do. And um, she knows where she is in life right now. And, and she was so gracious about it, said, you know, she understands if you don't want to watch it, which, gosh, just, just, she's such a sweetheart. And, and then she mentioned, you know, the really, um, the 
podcast we all talk about, Tiny Paper Foxes and Andre Sue Knits. She said, you know, you can you can go over here if this is what you're looking for, and, and they're great. And she gives them this wonderful um, stamp of approval, I guess. And I just I thought that was so sweet and so touching. And if nothing else, um, I mean, a person like that, it, it, if you haven't watched her, I, check her out for sure. She's I, I love her personality and I love what she does and she's fun and, and I enjoy watching her. I watch her regularly. So I wanted to say hi to Amber. Um, also, uh, Jilly from the Knitting Broomstick podcast. She had mentioned me on her last podcast too and had some very nice things to say. Thank you, Jilly. And uh, Melissa on, from the Naughty Knitwits podcast. It's a podcast with three women, um, Melissa, Michelle, and Leslie. Lots of fun. You feel like you're just having a knit night with them. They're a hoot. They always make me laugh. And it's funny, I was thinking about this as I was writing some notes down. We're kind of in this, uh, you know how when you come up to a door and, uh, you know, oh, no, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. Well, sometimes I feel like we get like that with uh, some, some hellos and some compliments. You know, I had said something, they had said something, but they said such nice things. I feel like I just have to say, you know, <laughs> thank you and hello again. So we're going back and forth. It's, it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem. I like it. But it's, uh, yeah, I, I just, I had to say something. And by the way, if you watch a podcast and you ever happen to hear somebody mention me on it, please let me know because I watch a lot of podcasts. But there are times when I don't watch the whole thing because I just got home. So I'll listen to a lot on my commute into and from work. And I don't realize that I didn't watch it all and I never get back to it. Sometimes I do, if I remember, if I remember. Um, but a lot of times I don't. And there's other podcasts, especially as I'm, I'm podcasting uh, myself, I really want to get out there and watch a lot of them. And uh, I know I'm missing stuff. So if you hear anything, let me know, anything, anything at all. PM me, um, put it in the Ravelry board, I don't care. I would really love to know if you know the, the, you know, the podcast and what episode it is. That would be great because I really want to make sure I check, you know, I, I say hi to people. I, um, I acknowledge anything that they say uh, about me. So that would be great if you could do that. And I love getting suggestions on podcasts. I have no problem with anyone putting on a Ravelry thread if they started a podcast, on my Ravelry group, excuse me, if they heard about something great in another podcast. One of the things for my podcast that I am envisioning is, um, this is something that is kind of a strength of mine overall. So um, where I work, I do uh, cybersecurity and I don't have any college in technical, computers, anything like that. Um, but that's exactly what I do. And I've learned a lot just on the job and I do, do quite a bit in that work, that line of uh, work. One of my strengths I think is that I don't always know the answer to something and I'm willing to admit that, but I know the person who does. And if I don't, I will find out. So, um, that's kind of what I see this podcast, like kind of like an operator switchboard here. If there's something cool that I hear going on, I want you guys to know about it. You may already know about it, but I'm sure you don't hear everything. I don't hear everything. I'm learning a lot from you guys in the Ravelry group. So without getting too further into that, that's just, uh, I just wanted to put that out there. So put anything in that you hear about in my, my Ravelry group. You don't have to ask. You can say it. Um, you can post a link. I'm okay with all that. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So in my last episode, I mentioned these little guys here, uh, Sheep and a Llama by Juniper Moon Farm. They're on Etsy and they're also um, have their own blog and their own store and they do a lot of really cool things. They have a yarn CSA. You really should check out their blog. They do so many neat things. Uh, they had a program called the Shepherd and the Shearer. I think there was like, I think they started that in 2012. Don't co quote me on that. And I don't know if they are still doing it. I think they are because I saw the link on the blog, but it's a really cool program where they go out to people who, the shepherds, and they, you know, get all this wool back and you, it's, it's kind of like a CSA. You get a certain quantity of yarn. And the first year they did it, I think we got some Kate Davies patterns 
and it was a sweaters quantities worth and, and it was just a really cool program and the proceeds went to the shepherds. These are also supporting um, a charity and it's called Heifer International. And let me pull that up real quick. I have it right here. So it's uh, sheep stash is what they're calling this. And they're donating part of the proceeds to Heifer International, which is, uh, they donate, this, this uh, charity donates livestock to help lift families out of hunger and poverty. So one year they raised enough money to purchase six sheep, two goats, two pigs, and two hives of honeybees, several flocks of geese, ducks, and chickens. And they're given to families who, who need this. That is super cool. They also say that they're gonna post how much money they raised from this. They just started, I was under the impression the first time, and I don't know where I got it, that there was just a very limited quantity of these. And I know they don't go on forever and ever, but they're not as limited as I thought. They are, they just added new animals. They have like bunnies and alpacas, and oh, I got that on another page too. Um, yeah, I'm looking at a bunny, a goat, a llama, alpaca. They just added more animals, super cool. Um, Susan B. Anderson knit sweaters for these, and she posted a photo on Instagram. It was so cool. And knowing Susan, I'm sure she posted something out there on how to make them. And Amy Beth from The Fat Squirrel Speaks did a really cool Christmas wreath with these as well. And she posted that on Instagram as well. That, I said I wanted to wrap one and have it done by this episode. And that just didn't, it didn't happen. I don't, I don't really have a good excuse. I just realized that as I was getting ready to record that I did not do that. So I really, I want to do that and I need to do that. And maybe I'll make a wreath like Amy Beth because that was really neat. And on the Juniper Moon Farm blog, they showed a bunch of really cool ideas on some things you could do with these um, in, in some different crafty ways. If you ever see me looking over here, I'm looking at my screen because it's telling me something. <laughs> so I'm seeing that my battery's full. I'm seeing if I'm running out of time, it's going to stop, whatever. And it's blinking right now at me, but it's not a bad blink, so that's good. So let's talk about my finished object. I only have one, but I love it. <laughs> so I knit my first Christmas ornament. <laughs> Look at these little guys. Look how tiny they are. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. Look. Hello. <laughs> I love them. I mean, they're like I don't even know if they're two inches tall. They're, they're tiny. I made these, um, it is a free Ravelry pattern. This is called the Mini Mitten Ornaments by Andrea Kopachek. I made these with Zia Wools out of a mini that uh, I bought from, from her store. And it's in her, Dag, you gotta tell me if I'm saying this right. The Teos base. Taos, it's T-A-O-S, Taos base, but it's a rustic three ply. It's 75% Corydale and 25% nylon, and I love it. I don't have the colorway with me, but it came in a pack of minis, and I wanna show you what's really neat about these. Um, one, super easy to knit, really fast, free pattern, all great things, but let me get it. Here it is. After I was done knitting it, I weighed it, and it weighed 3.9 ounces. And then I weighed the rest of the ball. And this weighed almost five ounces. So I could knit a square with my blanket, or for my blanket, my uh, sock blanket with this, or I could just knit some more mitts. I don't know, but I thought, wow, this mini, <laughs> I'm making this mini work. I'm gonna use all of this. This is, I thought that was really great. So that's the only thing I made, or finished, I should say. And, um, I actually, okay, so this pattern, it's free. Read through it, read through the whole pattern because um, it's, it's, it's a decent pattern, it's a decent pattern. If you are um, 
not a new, new, new knitter. I'm talking like really new, this is your first week learning kind of knitting. Even if you're a beginner, I think the pattern will be fine. Um, but there isn't, it's not, it's not, it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't leave um, what I would call gaping holes of information, but if you're not careful or you just start knitting it without reading through the pattern, you, you could get a, maybe a little confused. So just make sure you read through it. Um, there was a place where, especially towards the very bottom of the pattern, where it breaks out the last round into like three different lines. So if you're not careful, you may think that's three different rows. So something like that. But I, um, because I'm gonna knit some more of these, I'm gonna do some, um, ornament swaps and I checked out Susan B. Anderson's. She has a pattern similar to this and her stuff is just solid. It is just solid and I wanted to see, I was making some revisions. I got another pair on the needles and I was making some revisions on my own which I think anybody could totally do with the pattern that's free. But I just was curious how she wrote hers up and I bought it and hers was $3.50 and uh, I'm gonna knit a pair using her pattern and I'm sure I'll have a, a unfinished pair for the next podcast that I can talk to you guys about. But for a free pattern, happy, good, Andrea Kopachek, mini mitten ornaments. All right, works in progress. I have three and I debated showing you a couple of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and show them to you because, well, this is a knitting podcast too, you know? So we like to see our stuff. Sometimes I, I hear podcasters say, well, I'm not gonna show you such and such. I'm thinking, ah, oh, darn, I didn't see the one before. I really wanna see what you're working on. So maybe you're like that, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're like, Melissa, I've already seen this three times, put it away. Sorry. <laughs> this is my Hermani's Everyday Socks. Free pattern on Ravelry. I got one finished one done, which I've shown you on another podcast. I'm knitting it at a Sandara yarn. And I'm, I knit my socks on 2.75 millimeter needles. And here's a question I have for you guys. I never know whether or not to call these US 2s, and here's why. Because 2.5 millimeters needles are also called US 2s. And I even saw somewhere only one other time where it was called 2.5. I've never seen that any other time. So are there two US 2s? This is the time where, as an American, I'd rather just go with the metric system here. So <laughs> these are 2.75 millimeter needles. If anyone has clarification on that, let me know. I'm curious. So I knit these and I've turned the heel, got the heel almost completely done. I'm, I'm <sighs> and as I was doing it, I realized the heel was longer than the first one. And I thought, well, you know, it's not a whole lot longer. And it, eh, see, well, I don't know. So I was gonna keep going. And now as I'm talking about it, I still may, because right before this, I, even yesterday, I had decided I'm gonna rip it out, at least up to here, and do it again. I don't know. But either way, they're in timeout for a little while. I am almost done. They will definitely get finished because I want these socks, but I think I just, I need a break. Um, they've taken longer than they should, but oh well, it happens, right? It happens. I'm not gonna stress out about it. So there are, that is my Hermani's Everyday Socks. The other pattern, oh, so. The one I'm excited, there's two that I'm excited about, but the one that I'm most excited about is my Christmas socks. So I have started a Christmas sock knit along. Uh, feel free to join. I know there's a ton of uh, knit alongs going on for socks. There's Christmas knit alongs. There's knit alongs all over the place. This is a relaxed knit along. Um, you don't have to start them within the time frame. You could, or it could be a whip. Maybe you're just finishing them. I don't care. Uh, they are going to be, I'm gonna close it out though, right before Christmas. I can't remember the date. It's on the Ravelry thread. But uh, don't, don't stress out over this. You know, this, this is supposed to be fun. I need, I need to knit some uh, Christmas socks. I want to, and I thought it'd be fun to share pictures and cheer each other on. So I am doing these on, uh, with Jinx yarn in her Winter Wonderland colorway. It is her Glitz Sock Self-Striping. 
It is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. And I'm loving it, loving it. So the first time I cast these on, I did not talk about these because it was, a, I don't know what was going on. It's like that word you know how to spell that's really easy and for some reason you just can't. And then, you know, the next day you have no problem with it. Well, when I first cast these on, it was at, I think it was Rhinebeck weekend. And this is embarrassing to admit, but I cast them on probably about 14 different times. I'm not, I mean, that's no exaggeration. It was, it was over 10. I have abused this yarn. Oh my goodness, have I abused it. And the reason, part of the reason it took so many cast-ons is because I was trying magic loop. Now I, I can do magic loop. I've done it for th uh, other things. I did it for the monkey that I knit, but I wanted to do it with socks. I want to try some new techniques and it just, it wasn't that I couldn't cast on and knit, but it was too loose. It just wasn't looking right. didn't feel right. So I kept doing it again and again. And plus I was trying to get the stitch count right because I don't have my vanilla sock recipe. So I was being a little bit more anal about it because I want, I wanted to get close to what I think will be what works for me. I got so frustrated in the end, I just put this yarn down for, I don't know, maybe three weeks um, because I love this yarn and I don't wanna hate it <laughs> because it's not the yarn's fault, it is my fault. But, so I picked them up again and there was a few rows of ribbing and it looked loose and I didn't use a smaller needle for the ribbing and I made just a command decision when I picked them up that night. Ripped them entirely up again. <laughs> and I went back to DPNs and I'll tell you what, it, there was no problem, no problem at all. Cast it on, started knitting away. It's been beautiful, it's been fun, I I've, I've love it. Uh, this. I want to knit a ton of socks now. I just want to have socks all over the place. I just want to pick them up and knit rounds everywhere. I want some at the dinner table. I want some in my car. I want some in my purse. I want some next to my bed. I want some in the bathroom. I want them everywhere. I want to knit socks. Just, I love it. I love it. It's great. And this is wonderful. It's knitting up beautifully. And it's in my Amy Beth bag, the Fat Squirrel Speaks in my Christmas bag, which I love. I love this bag, love it. So there is that. And I have one more. I didn't work on this as much as I wanted to, but I did get some, I did get a, I put a, I put a pretty decent dent in it because I just picked this up last night. In fact, I stayed up really late knitting on this. So this is my loop shawl using um, Madeline Tosh Merino Light and Zia Wool's Fire and Ice. There is, okay, so this shawl pattern, it's Loop by Casapinka. It's a paid for pattern by Ravel on Ravelry. I love the look of it. I don't love knitting this and not because of the yarn, but I don't hate knitting it. So it's fallen somewhere in the middle. And it's because, one, I'm a really, I'm, I'm a pretty tight knitter. And you have these loops that you make right here. And um, it's a, in, it increases too. So you knit front, back, front. That's one of the, the stitches you do here. I switched to Haya Haya Sharps, trying to help the situation, which it did help a bit but it still is pretty cumbersome for me to get that loop um, row here. And I really think it's because I, I knit tightly. I don't think any other person, uh, a normal knitter or a loose knitter would have the problem I'm having with this. So it's not a pattern issue. It's not a yarn issue. It's a Melissa issue, <laughs> but um, I, I want this. Uh, I know it's gonna look beautiful. I just, I'm loving how the colors are working up. I just put some new stitch markers in there so I can kind of keep myself, um, so I don't have to keep counting. I like to count every so often to make sure my stitch counts aren't off because they do have, for each line, 
there's a chart in the back of the pattern that tells you exactly how many stitches you should have, which I really appreciate. And I'm using my stitch markers from, oh my gosh, I don't think, oh, that's terrible. I talked about these in another podcast. I will definitely post a link in the show notes because these are adorable. They're little books. So see, this is Romeo and Juliet. And uh, then they came with these little cute blue ones with the little crystal and there's flowers in there, little lavender flowers. And then this was, it's a whole set that just came together. They're beautiful. Another book here, this one is uh, Pride and Prejudice and they're really lightweight. They, they don't weigh anything down. They're super, for as, not big, but it, it's a little bigger than a normal stitch marker, I suppose. Um, like, look, see, that's how big it is up to my finger. It's super lightweight. Love this. And yeah, oh my goodness, that reminds me. So, jeez, goodness gracious. I was going to talk, you know what, no. I'm going to talk about it right after this. Actually, this will be a good segue into it. I thought that I was going to do it in different order, but no, no, I'm following my notes well, so I don't know why, why I'm thinking I'm not. But I like this. Didn't knit too much on it. And it also is a great pattern for showcasing variegated yarn. That's what I like about this a lot. I wanted, um, I love variegated yarns and I love how certain patterns, I mean, I know some people like to do a whole shawl and mitts out of variegated yarn, and I do too, but I also like when you put it against a kind of a neutral fabric or a, uh, you know, just a, a softer color and let the pattern or the, the colors really shine through. So I think this is gonna be phenomenal. And that's why I chose this pattern. So, um, you know, I don't always tell you guys what I'm knitting uh, with my needle sizes. These are, I believe, US sixes, high, high sharps. Yeah, it calls for sixes, and I think in the end you switch to fours, which I'm clearly not there. But I usually try to keep my Ravelry pages pretty up to date. I do need to take some pictures, though. I was realizing that the other day, but I, I usually keep pretty good notes, and I usually put the needle sizes immediately in. So um, if there's ever any question, just you can ask me or I will try to put them in the show notes. I don't know that I'm gonna go down that road for show notes. That's a lot of details and I really like to, because it's already in my, my Ravelry page. So probably not gonna put those in the show notes, not that, that, that level of detail. But if you have a question or you miss it or I don't mention it, please feel free to ask me. But that leads me into, that's the end of my whips. No more FOs. Let's talk about the giveaway. Zia Wool's Fire and Ice, that was the colorway I was just talking about that was in the Loop Shaw. And she has graciously, Dag, uh, donated a skein of Fire and Ice. Oh, just still, I love this skein. I just wanna, I wanna buy a skein, Dag, and just keep it on a desk to look at my desk. Actually, I bought a new desk to one of my, uh, children can use, but I just, I love these colors. I love them. And she's included a little mini skein with this of um, her Angel Fire. This is, uh, there's a Ravelry thread on the Spicy Homemaker group. And the only thing you have to do is go in there and post a picture of a project that you are knitting or have knit in variegated yarn. That's it. That's all you have to do. So, uh, the first giveaway I did, I chattered quite a bit, and I told you if um, on this way you'll you'll know right away if I'm going to chatter or not. And the first person posted a picture, and I just I hadn't really even thought about it. I saw it, and I wanted to talk, and I instantly responded to them. And I thought, wait a second, stop, 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 stop. Just don't do it, because this was supposed to be meant more for pictures. Although I love the details people are providing about it too, um, if they like the pattern or if it was their first pattern, and there, there's just. It, some really cool stories and everything you guys post. I love hearing about you guys. But I stopped right there. I did not chatter. I, I'm not chattering in this thread. So um, that's a little unusual for me, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> so that closes out November 30th. Oh gosh, and the, there's two prizes. So there's that skein of yarn and a box of minis. And this 
is one of the, I've got two boxes that I bought for myself that I am using right now. That was what I used, one of these minis for the mittens you saw. And no, that particular color isn't in here, but that's pretty close right there. This is 100% um, superwash merino, two ply in her sugar loaf base. And they're all, there's five skeins, all different colors, beautiful. So there's two options to win in here, the skein of fire and ice and a pack of minis. So go over there, post a photo. You have to post a photo to win. So if you haven't posted a photo, please post one. And another question, if anybody knows the answer to this. So I've had this happen twice now in my Ravelry group where someone posts a picture and I get a, um, a circle in the middle of where their picture should be with a line through it. So no, no photo is posted or I can't see the photo. And uh, the first time I mentioned it, another girl had said, she was seeing the same thing I was, which was no photo and just the circle with the line through it. And someone else did that again, but they can see their photo, but I can't. Do you guys know what's going on there? I'm just curious because um, it doesn't happen, it's happened twice. I'm just curious if there's, um, if there's a reason why it's doing it, if it's something on my end, or if it's something that I can tell the person, you know, hey, here's what you need to do. That would be great if anybody knows. So Zia Wool's giveaway, November 30th. She is my indie dyer of the month that I am highlighting. And what I would like to do in the future when I do this, and I still may do this with you, Dag, I think I, think I would really like to, um, is maybe ask them a few questions and post that, give you a little bit more background information in the thread, in uh, the podcast, because I think it's really interesting to hear about uh, how indie dyers came, to, how they started to become indie dyers and uh, what their goal is or, or what they're uh, wanting to accomplish. You know, some of them want to stay small scale. Some of them want to get bigger. Some of them, you know, there's just a wide variety of things. Um, for instance, Dag, I know, lives in the Southwest of the United States. A lot of her colors are inspired by the desert which, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. And when you hear that and you look at some of our colors, it clicks, you get it. So I think that's just a, um, a little extra layer. We have so many choices as knitters for yarn. And I like knowing a little bit more about the people who dye my yarn, if possible. It's not necessary, but I enjoy it. I enjoy that connection. So I, um, I would like to start doing that and passing along that information to you guys. So stand by and see what happens with that. I've got a really great idea for December that I'm not gonna talk about now, but I'm pretty excited about it. So I can't wait to share it with you for the next Indie Dyer. Um, okay, knit alongs. I already talked about my Christmas sock knit along. That's a relaxed knit along. Just come over there. We're just talking. We're knitting socks. You don't have to be celebrating Christmas. I know I have uh, one viewer who lives in Israel and she celebrates Hanukkah. They don't have to be Christmas socks. You're just knitting socks right now. <laughs> You're knitting socks and you know, we're just sharing what we're doing. And, um, yeah, that's just a fun, relaxed knit along. I will, mm, I'm gonna have a prize for that. I don't know what it's gonna be because this is, this is more or less about us just knitting and having fun than knitting for a prize. So I don't care if your socks are in five other knit alongs. I never will. I will never have a knit along that's exclusive. And um, yeah, just come over and have some fun and let's talk. The other knit along that I did not talk about at all, I don't think on my last podcast, but I did the one before that, is my Knit My Mitts Knit Along. I am realizing on many levels that I did not, the first year I did this, it went very, very well. But our community was different then. And the way I am trying to structure it now isn't, it doesn't work. It does not work. So I had my own Knit Along group because 
there used to be groups for just knit alongs in two, I think it was 2012. Uh, so not even that long ago, but now with podcasters having their own Ravelry groups and, um, there's just all the knit alongs take place in, in those groups. I would just try to resurrect that particular knit along group and, and just use that. It really hasn't worked. And, um, so here is, I'm going to restructure this a bit. I'm going to bring it over to my spicy homemaker podcast group. And, um, I'm going to do it two different ways, or uh, there's going to be a couple options on here, which I've discussed before, but they're a little bit different again. One, if you knit my fingerless mitts, um, post a picture and you will be eligible for a prize. I have one pattern and I talked about it two episodes ago, I believe the good time mitts. If you knit those, it's a free pattern. Very easy, very simple. People love them. Great gifts, quick knit. If you knit them between now and I think the middle of January is what I said, you post a photo, you'll be entered in for a prize. I don't know what the prizes are yet. I have another option of, it's getting dimmer. I could, phew, wow, the sun is going down. It is getting dark here early. Maria from Stitch in Sweden talks about how it gets dark in Sweden at 3 p.m. I cannot even imagine that. Cannot imagine it. Regardless, moving on. The, <laughs> if you want to knit mitts and send them to me and I will give them out as part of uh, the homeless ministry that I participate in with my church. You send them to me and we will give them to homeless people in St. Louis. And uh, also on that, because I've had a couple other questions from people. If you have any mitts that are gently used or that you knit with a different pattern and you would like to donate for charity, PM me, I will give you my address, you can send them and I will also enter you in for a, uh, a prize for this because really if you're doing the charity option, it's completely ridiculous to say it has to be knit with my pattern. No, 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 no. I will ask that you do not give me stuff that has holes in it or so worn that it's ridiculous. You know, give me, um, if you want to give me something, I, I don't mind gently used gloves and stuff. We do do that, but, um, you know, make sure they're, they're, they're in good workable order and, and, and they're good solid, you know, they, they need to keep people warm. So keep that in mind. If you want to do that, feel free. If you have any other questions about this nylon, cause it's going to go for a while. Um, let me know. Okay. I think that wraps us up. I do want to, well, for knit alongs and giveaways. So a particular one thing I want to talk about really quick is a uh, viewer. I think she posted this note on YouTube. I mentioned that I write notes for the podcast. I'm getting better and better about it. Still nowhere near hundred percent, but, uh, so, and I would lose the notes. You know, I'm trying to keep things in my mind so that I can talk about them with you guys. And one viewer said, why don't you have a notebook that you carry with you and write your notes in there. And now I do, I have two as a matter of fact, but this is the one that I'm using right now for, um, to keep my episode notes that I want to talk about. And this has been a tremendous help. Um, great idea. So glad I did it. And I wanted it to be pretty and cute and carry it in my purse with me everywhere because sometimes I think of something, sometimes I think of something at work. Sometimes I think of something a while waiting in a doctor's office, but this, this has been great. Whoever, I did not look up your name, but whoever recommended this, thank you. Wonderful idea. Love it. My other notebook that I have for the podcast is like for future ideas, things I want to do. So there's that. And I'm going to uh, step away for just a moment because it is insanely quiet in my house, which almost never happens, but it's because one Ruby is asleep. She takes like three hour naps. It's brilliant. <laughs> and two, my boys are at a birthday party, but one of them should be arriving anytime. And I just realized the doors are locked. 
so I need to unlock them quickly so that they can come in and not uh, ring the doorbell. And then my husband, he has went out to the Air Force Base to go shopping, so it's just me and you. <laughs> it's kind of nice. I like it. <laughs> Love my family, but you know what I mean. Sometimes those moments of quiet just kind of helps you reset back to zero. So I will be back in just one moment. Okay, I am back and my son can now come back into his home freely. Um, so I want to get right back at it and talk about what is going on in our community, the knitting community. Some things that I've heard about, some things that I've watched, I wanna pass on some of those things to you. I am sure some of these things I'm about ready to talk about, a lot of you have heard about. But I know that all of you have not heard about some of these things, so that is my point in discussing this. My first thing that I want to discuss is two podcasts, uh, one of which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And the other one, I, I have a feeling because I'm, I'm seeing the numbers of viewers on hers, uh, you're getting familiar with very, very quickly. But the first one is uh, Nicole Hugh Loco, new podcaster. And wow, wow. I am so, so impressed with the quality that is really coming out of the podcasting community. Uh, Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes, you know, right out of the, the starting gate, just brilliant. Uh, most of us have a little bit of a learning curve. There's some growing pains. Um, Jenny did not really have it, particularly in the production uh, quality aspect. And yeah, she's, she's very natural and comfortable in front of the camera. So. Nicole is exactly the same way. Her husband is a, um, he's in film. So just like Jenny, they, their husbands contribute to the video quality, which is outstanding. What I love about her is that she reminds me of that brilliant technical mind out there that has some great security software that keeps us all safe and he could sell it for millions of dollars if he wants, but instead he gives it away for free. That's kind of what she reminds me of because she's doing podcasts and tutorials on everything. She sells her stuff. She dyes yarns. She makes bags. She's a maker and, and it's beautiful, but she shows you how to do it too. She's doing, she, her first tutorial I believe was on project bags on how to make them. She did one, a two part series on how to dye yarn. Uh, she's, she's just doing some fantastic things and I am enjoying it and really, and I just, I can't wait to see where she goes with this because it's phenomenal. She's great. If you have not watched her, I highly recommend it. But, uh, she was just like Jenny from Tiny Paper Foxes, uh, right out of the starting gate. Um, people noticed, and they should. They really should. She's that good. And gosh, I am seeing how dim it's getting in here. I am going to have to come up. I have some lighting, but I need some more. I'll have to figure that out. I need some more lighting because winter is just going to be an issue with lighting. So hopefully you can still see pretty good, but babbling again. Um, Oh, oh, okay. So I got some, one other thing I wanted to say. So she did those tutorials, but then she posted like on Instagram. Um, I think it was Instagram. She made a bunch of project bags and she was getting ready to do an update on her shop. And she said, yeah, I got this fantastic sale on zippers. And she said how it was, it was a phenomenal off the charts kind of deal. She posted what the store was and, and yeah, just super cool. So the other thing I want to do or uh, mention is Andy from Andre Sue Knits, which you guys know, but I just love how she keeps just raising the bar on hers as well. She has been doing some great, great videos. And if you don't mind, once again, I am going to take a quick break. Uh, I hear my son come in and I need to change my battery. Be right back. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, fresh battery, my son is in safely, and all is well. 
I'm gonna try to wrap this up real quick because the lighting is getting just so poor. Uh, so let's get on with it. As I was saying about Andy and her podcast on Andre Sue Knits, she has really stepped up the game and uh, I love it. I love watching it. She does these um, videos within her podcast showing how she blends fibers on her blending board. She just did one on making soap. And what is so cool, one of the things I really enjoy about Andy is that she, um, it's like everything that, that she does, someone in her family is doing something with her. Even with her podcast, her husband and one of her daughters helps with the editing. Super cool. Uh, I really wish someone in my family did this. <laughs> um, then uh, I know, uh, I think it's her youngest daughter is the one that really, she kind of dyes yarn and she did some soap making and, and she just talks about how everybody uh, plays a part in, in her crafting, which is fun. But uh, if you haven't watched her, definitely watch her. And maybe uh, you just haven't caught up with her in a while. Check her out. Uh, she has put out recently some really good stuff. So not that it, her stuff before wasn't good, it was great. But like I said, she's just, she's raised the bar. I feel like um, a lot of the podcasters are doing that now and hats off to you guys. Great job, I love it. Keep it up and um, makes me wanna do better, I know that. So thank you. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about, I think that's it for, yeah. Okay, so I have been, <clears throat> I hadn't listened to the Curious Handmade podcast in a while. I used to listen to her, and I still do. I just like I just started podcasting, so I've been catching up with a lot of new podcasts and some other things. So um, Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade podcast, she does uh, audio. She's phenomenal. Love it. I've been binging on a lot of hers right now, and uh, she's a designer. She I made her Whispering Island shawl, which is phenomenal. Loved it. Uh, I always get a lot of compliments when I wear that shawl. And she is, um, she's just great. But she mentioned on, I don't remember what podcast it was. It was one of her recent ones because I've been listening to so many. The, I want to make sure I say this right. That's why I'm looking at it. Okay, so the Indie Design Gift Along of 2015 is going on right now. It's in its third year on Ravelry and it's a huge thing. I never heard of it until this year. Don't ask me how, I don't know. I'm guessing most of you are like, duh, Melissa, how did you not know about this? <laughs> but in case some of you are like me and you never heard of it, I'm really excited about this. So it's already kicked off and what it is, is all the indie designers, uh, there's over 300, almost 400 indie designers on Ravelry from, uh, it started a few days ago till, till what's the date what's the date i read it right down okay november 19th to november 27th are offering 25 percent off on a lot of their patterns um they there is a group the indie design gift along and they have all the designers listed in there they have lots and lots of information um so you can check them out and uh find out more but just at first glance there was a few things. They have a lot of knit-alongs going on. They're giving out tons of prizes for all kinds of things. I mean, there's just so much going on over there. I couldn't cover it if I tried. So you want to go over there and look at it. But if you are wanting to buy patterns and they're, they're trying uh, to do a main focus, not that there isn't bigger things in there, to gift, um, gear it towards gifts gifts that you can make during Christmas time. So there's a lot over there. If there were some uh, patterns that you've been wanting to knit uh, you may want to check it out uh, because I saw some big ones in there that I have not knit yet and I would like to, so I haven't purchased the pattern. For instance, in Helen Stewart's, she's selling her Pebble Beach shawl, her Summer Tide shawl, the Whispering Island shawl's in there. I've already knit that. And her Odessa shawl. They're all 25% off right now. And the code is in that Ravelry group. Um, all the knit-alongs are going on until December 30th. And so here's just some uh, names of some designers that I noticed. Freckles and Pearls, Lily Go, her interview with the vampire shawl looks amazing. Sarah Birch, there's an owl hat in there that I wanna make. Sweet Paprika, Truly Myrtle, um, Alicia Plummer has a bunch of things in there. Uh, Justina Lorcus, Lor K 
Kowska. She has, I had heard of these two shawls, but I never bought them and I might this time around. Danzig and Aisling. Casapinka from the loop shawl that I'm making, she's in there. Uh, Hunter Hammerson, there is a phenomenal pair of socks that I will buy that pattern. It's called Cyberetic. They look really cool and they are um, described as luxury socks and they look great. I'm going to buy some fantastic yarn. Uh, something with some cashmere in it, I think, or some silk or both, and knit these socks with this pattern. It's beautiful. Uh, there's just a lot over there, 380 some odd indie designers. Uh, check it out, take advantage, buy some patterns, 25% off. I think that's great. Uh, I think it's awesome that they do this every year. I had no idea. I will definitely check them out every year. So this episode was going uh, quite a bit longer than I anticipated. So real quick on chatter, um, Thanksgiving's coming up next week and I think I may not pad podcast that weekend. I am 98% certain that I will not just because I kind of want to spend it with the family and, and uh, knit my heart out. Because when I uh, podcast, which I love, I do, I do adore this, I do, I love it so much. Uh, podcasting has brought my creativity to newer levels, I feel. It just really inspires me on a lot of levels, so I really like doing it. Um, but it takes pretty much a full day out of my weekend. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it almost a full day. This is a Saturday. I start right when Ruby goes down and then there's editing and uploading and, and all that good stuff that will go into tomorrow. So yeah, it takes a good portion and that's okay. That's okay. But uh, I, I feel like, you know, there's, there's times where I'm going to have to say, yeah, not, not this weekend. And the good thing is, is I will have more knitting to show if I do that. So unless something comes up, that is my plan. And uh, if I do not see you before then, happy Thanksgiving. And yeah, so yeah, I've got some other notes here and things I could talk about, but you know, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. I hope you enjoy time with your family. If you're in the United States, of course, uh, we're gonna go to my aunt's. Uh, she lives out, way out, way out in the country with some lots of chickens and her dog, her Great Pyrenees just had puppies. So we'll be able to play with them. And uh, my cousin just taught herself how to crochet. I told her I'd show her uh, how to drop spindle. And so we're gonna be doing some of that with them. It'll be fun. And uh, the boys and I have decided Charlie Brown is going to be our first Christmas movie of the season. And we're going to watch it that weekend. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you use the holidays uh, to spend it with family and loved ones and also uh, to make, create, do, dream something beautiful. <laughs> and uh, happy Thanksgiving and I look forward to spending more time with you later. Bye.